Hello YouTube and welcome back to Tylo or Bust. I'm Mike Bradley and as you can see I am just transferring uh, some of the crew over and uh, once that's done I'll uh, disconnect the lander and uh, start bringing it down to a lower orbit. So I'll see you then. And we're back. Uh, so as you can see, we're in a, about a 30 uh, kilometer orbit by 30, well, 31 by 30, or 31 and a half by 30. Uh, so yeah, we're pretty close to the uh, surface of Tylo, but not quite as close as I initially planned back when I, back from episode 3, I think, when I did the uh, science experiment on orbit and uh, delta V requirements. But anyways, let's uh, get rid of this guy, since we don't need him for the landing, and actually don't want him for the landing. That would be, <laughs> that's a lot of weight to uh, try to land with. So he's going to float away fine. Bob and Jebediah are the co-pilot and pilot. That's actually... Oh, camera. So yeah, not the greatest view. But that's okay. So yeah, let's uh, get this guy down onto Tylo. Uh, but first... We'll keep your normal minus to keep the batteries charged. We need to engage these engines. Yeah, I think I said this uh, in an earlier episode, but I don't really have enough uh, solar capacity or battery capacity in this to uh, go long term without sun exposure. But, uh, anyways, keeping this pointing in the normal direction, we'll keep at least one panel pointed at the sun. And keep the batteries charged. All those engines are activated. So, yeah. Um, I'm actually going to time warp a little bit. I don't really want to be landing near these. This would be nice. Uh, and in fact, I can kill my orbital velocity pretty quickly. Uh, and even if I do overshoot this, it's not going to be so bad. So... Right about... There. Point in the retrograde uh, orientation. We'll make sure we're controlling from here. We are. And we'll monitor th this guy's fuel, because he's going to run out first. And we want to ditch those outside tanks as early as possible. In fact, I could probably ditch the empty ones right now, but I'm not going to bother. You don't have to be exactly on the retrograde marker. There goes our transfer stage. As you can see, we're pulling some serious G's here. And I prevent overheat. Uh, I'm going to want to limit that to 70 at some point. So, surface horizontal velocity is falling. Uh 
I like being pointed in the proper direction. Those tanks are empty. Get rid of them. And we've killed most of our horizontal velocity. Gear down. So let's limit that throttle now. And in fact, Orbital is not going to do us any good, so we'll go to basic SAS, and we can see we've got one minute until our suicide burn. Ah, this strain looks a little bumpy, but hopefully it'll be flat enough and smooth enough. And. Still plenty of fuel. There's the tanks. So, because I've limited myself 70% uh, throttle, uh, I shouldn't, probably shouldn't trust the suicide burn here. So, we are still more than three and a half kilometers above the surface. Doing good. Still plenty of fuel. So, 350. Two hundred. Uh, let's get it so I can see my shadow. Oh, pogoing a bit. Oh, well, not the smoothest of landings, but we're down. Ah, so just in case, let's do a quick save. Not that I expect anything to happen, but <laughs> you never know. Uh, and we're not quite in the best orientation here, but that's fine. Let's remove that throttle limit. And uh, get these guys out on EVA. Of course, the commander goes first. That's one small step for Kerman. One giant leap for Kerbaltop Kind.
Yay! Okay, Bob. Time for you to have some fun. You've been such a worry wart this entire time. There, that wasn't so bad now, was it? Hey, you're actually smiling. Okay. Let's go ahead and plant a flag. Okay, that doesn't seem right, but whatever. The black flag. I don't know why that's doing it. Uh, maybe I'll replace it in uh, post-production. Tylo. Landing one. On this day, we conquered the great moon Tylo. Yeah, so uh, that's not really the uh, flag I chose when I started this series. But I guess it'll have to do. So, uh, guys, go about and do some science. You're on the Tylo, for goodness sake. So, I don't know, you know how much time I'm going to need to, uh, or to give before my transfer stage uh, catches up. But uh, let's get these guys back inside. And, uh, on the way off this rock. Just to make sure I don't totally screw this up. Another quick save. Now the pressure. In five, four, three, two, one, lift off. So, I guess I uh, kind of overbuilt this, uh, because, uh, as you'll see here shortly, uh, well, first of all, I had to cut my engines really quickly before I even uh, turned over to uh, the horizon. Uh, but we'll see here shortly that, uh, well, it just wasn't a great launch. I uh, get my apoapsis out way further than I really wanted to, uh, and that kind of changed my plans. So, uh, once we... you can see there now that, uh, yeah, my apoapsis is 700 and some kilometers. And, uh, that changes how I'm gonna get this, these guys back to the station. So, uh, here's, a uh, live commentary Mike to show you how that's done. So, we're back, uh, we're in a strange orbit here, but, uh, just trying to, uh, 
dock here with uh, or using the least amount of mono propellant that I can because I'm running a little low. So just uh, getting this lined up pretty much perfectly. Point at the target. And thrust. So, do that. We'll do this. Not that her rotation matters all that much, but again, good practice. And, uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, I am going to need to use a little RCS. But I don't think it's going to be much. Oh, you know what? I don't think I'm controlling from the right spot. No, I'm not. Okay, I think we'll we'll be fine. Yeah, we look good. Okay, not quite perfectly aligned, but that's okay. We are docked. <laughs> So, time to get us back to the space station. And actually, the way we'll do this is we'll set our apoapsis to be 100 kilometers. Don't need you open anymore. And we'll do that by burning towards ground. And yeah, just make a whole bunch of orbits. You know what? I'm not going to even bother docking. Just going to kill our relative velocity or as much of it as I can. I 
and then just EVA these guys over. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, Bob. dangerous job, but someone's got to do it. Okay, where do I need to be going? Other side. Oh, this is a terrible orientation for trying to get in out of ED, uh, in from EVA. But first, of course. Okay, Jeb, your turn. But you're experienced in this. Lights. Oh, smacked his head. But there we go. We are just about ready to uh, send these guys home. So, uh, first things first, I'm going to need to refuel, and uh, then I'm going to need to uh, check that I have a good phase angle. Uh, right now, that's not a good number. So, uh, once I get that all set up and uh, I'm ready for the burn, I'll uh, bring you guys back. So guys, we're all set up. We actually had to pass our ideal uh, exit burn uh, just because we want to uh, use 
the Oberth effect uh, to our best advantage by uh, breaking orbit of Tylo into a uh, highly elliptic orbit around Joule, uh, with the periaps just about 10 kilometers above the uh, above the or above the atmosphere of Joule. So we'll switch to this guy. He's all fueled up. Uh oh. What's going on here? Am I not? Oh, there we go. So we'll back away from him. We'll set up a maneuver node to uh, drop us down. That is too far. And we won't actually worry about that because uh, we're not going to even... Oh, shoot. At least this isn't really time critical. I've got at least a few minutes. So that's still too low. That's way too high. Actually, let's try to optimize this exit burn. Right around there. Way too low. Too high. Still too high. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. So we want this around 150 or so. That's good enough. 145 is fine. And so that's a pretty healthy burn. But it's uh, nothing their fuel load can't handle. Because I fully refueled it. And let's turn RCS off, actually. So, burn in 8 minutes. Should only be, able to be about a two, two and a half minute burn, but uh, we'll do a test fire right here. Yep, two minute burn. So, there we go. Oh, too far. Well, that's uh, easily corrected. There we go. 
And so... Now we uh, create our node here. Oh wow, that's a, <laughs> way too much of a burn. I guess I didn't get my uh, exit angle quite right. But that's okay. This is going to be interesting. Hopefully I'll uh, meet up with Kerbin. So uh, I'll bring you back when I do this burn. So, I'm ready to do my burn, but I'm a little worried about one thing that I've seen. And that's that Kribben's going to be on the opposite, opposite side of its orbit uh, when I go to meet it. Now, uh, I used a website to tell me when to do this burn, so I'm hoping that it's correct and that I will end up on the proper side of Kerbin. Uh, yeah, because the phase angle is right. Um, I mean, I could just double check right now, but uh, I don't think it's worth it. So, uh, anyways, we've got our burn here right about now, so let's just go ahead and do it. So, we have a nice place for the descending node. That's going to be easy to correct. But I have no indication of how close we're going to be. Oh. So, uh, let's uh, leave the sphere of influence. Bye, Jewel and Tylo. So, descending node, go in the normal direction.
Now maybe my problem is that I'm loitering out here too long, and that's why I'm not going to make my encounter. But hopefully I can uh, solve the issue, and hopefully it won't mean coming back out here for an extra orbit. There you go, you see that, uh, it's saying that Kerbin's going to be on the total opposite side. Haha, -ha, I have a solution! It's, uh, basically just a 24 meter per second burn, and I only have to do one extra orbit. But, oh, that looks interesting. It looks like I'm going to be re-encountering Jewel with this, which might not be the best thing. Yeah, let's uh, try this again. Oh no, that's uh, later orbits. Perfect. So yeah, I don't even have to do. It's just 20 seconds of burn. Or 20 meters per second. So. Or actually retrograde. Kill you. And I can uh, watch this guy go down. I don't really care which direction I'm going to enter Kerbin orbit, because all I'm doing is uh, landing. So that's probably good right there. Actually, let's see what happens if I... Nope, I want to burn the other way. See, this is why burning early is good. Actually, let's just use the RCS. There we go. We should have... Uh, that should bring us straight into the atmosphere. I'm probably going to trim that out so that I enter a shallow, or enter at a nice shallow angle. Uh, basically set my periaps at, oh, probably 10 kilometers, which will hopefully slow me down uh, enough so that I don't go speeding into the surface. I do have parachutes on this guy, right? Yeah, parachutes. Uh, let's actually close the shield, because he doesn't need to be open. Uh, I'm not confident enough to uh, disengage just yet, but uh, yeah. We'll uh, see you in, well, uh, time to bury apps. One year, 216 days. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Bob's still freaking out. So we're back, we're about four days, uh, four days, eight hours out from our uh, sphere of influence change. We have, oh, and you see this is why you check it. Because that's not what, what I set. Uh, radial minus, I think. Let's actually uh, focus on 
Urban. Oh, no, it's... I need to go... Radio Plus. I believe this is the right direction. I have had this happen to me before, a uh, long time ago, before doing any of this YouTube stuff. Uh, we're returning from Duna. I thought I was going to be low enough, and by the time I got to my sphere of influence change, well, things have changed. So that's the floating point precision error uh, for you. That's what that will do. Okay, if that doesn't get us down to the ground, it should at least get us captured. And who knows, maybe we'll even land at Kerbin. What's that, four days, 16 hours? Uh, not looking good though. Uh, I think I'm going to miss Kerbin, because that's, that time warp buggy is sitting, or sorry, not Kerbin, the uh, space center. That time warp buggy is one of the things that I used for uh, fast forwarding to full time warp. Um, he's sitting on the launch, or on the runway. But anyways... Uh, we should be good to go now. That shouldn't change uh, any more other than uh, slight fluctuations. As we can see there, but it's still 10,800 meters. Give or take 50 meters. And there's Kerbin. Well, good thing I checked again. There we go. So, now there is basically no chance that that number is going to change. One thing we are going to do is we're going to fire once we reach um, about a hundred kilometers. So just passing a thousand now. Oh, don't you crash on me now. Okay, 100 kilometers, retrograde. And uh, we'll just use up as much of this fuel as we can. And actually, we'll burn that way so that we don't lower our power apps too low. Oh, we're in the atmosphere.
Oh, look at those reentry effects. Still need to kill off a lot of uh, velocity, but we have good thrust weight ratio now that we've burned off a whole bunch of fuel. If we have to, we can point basically straight up. Okay, we're actually doing pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, not going to land on the daytime side, but... That's okay. So, I think that's uh, enough velocity burned off. Let's separate and deploy the parachutes. Of course, Bob is freaked out, but Jeb is smiling like a clown. Well, guys, that just about does it for us. Uh, we're tw 12 kilometers above the surface, uh, and we've brought our got the Kerbinauts safely home, even though it took uh, an extra orbit in three years uh, to do it. But uh, they're safe and sound. Let me know what you thought of this series. Uh, I will be taking a break from uh, YouTube videos for the next little bit, probably until point two two comes out, uh, at which point I have a few ideas. But until then, uh, let's just watch this guy uh, get down to the surface. Looks like we'll be coming, uh, we came in over ocean. And there's the transfer stage. But yeah, again, let me know what you uh, thought. Uh, leave a like if you liked, and don't forget to subscribe. There will be more videos. This has been Tyler Robust. I'm Mike Bradley. I'll see you next time.